Hey, Daniel. Uh, first of all, you know, thanks so much for including me here. Really, it's always a pleasure being here. And the setup here is just fantastic. So thanks, everyone, in here. Uh, we had a little bit of a pickle in that, uh, you know, given the weather, you know, all our grafts, implants, uh, get stuck somewhere across the country. So we are going to do a world premiere here right now, something that has never been attempted before. Uh, we are going to do a transfer animal approach uh, like we would do if we would have a cage. Uh, the cage will be virtual. Isn't that great, right? Uh, because we don't have one. Uh, but at the same time, I prepared uh, an interlaminar approach and we're going to visualize the steps and the safety of this uh, approach uh, in real time. So if you're having a different interlaminar approach, at the same time we do the transforaminal approach for an endoscopic fusion. Again, we don't have the cage, but we can do at least the approach. And I can show you where the cage would end up if we could do it. So I think it's going to be hopefully in instructive. So let's come in with the, with the CM. So we're going to do uh, level four or five, and we'll do an interlaminar approach, which I already prepared. Uh, but just to kind of get that straight, so we're going to get an AP uh, CM shot. Here is the buttocks, here's the head. Um, I'm on the right side of the uh, torso of the patient. Um, so we're going to obtain uh, an end plate view of, f um, of uh, four or five. So we have, um, I think we did four or five there. So uh, shot there. So we are on four or five. Here's the disc view. So this would not be an appropriate entry point for an interlaminar approach. So we're going to add 10, 10 degrees of, of uh, kyphosis or caudal tilt. And can you left and right this, please? So whoever uh, is interested uh, in leaving the robot or navigation system and try to do this type of surgery, this opens up, as you can see nicely from the right, is the um, I don't know if you see both x-rays, but you can see that the four or five window in the laminar window is opening up nicely doing this maneuver by caudal tilting. X-ray, please. And then uh, we're going to have shot there. We're going to have an approach right, right there. So we end up right on the in the laminar window. We have the dilator. Again, I already prepared that. It's like, and they put that in here. Get the tubular retractor in there. Again, this is a tactile feedback kind of part of the surgery, so I can feel the bony edges. Here we go. And we can come out with a CM. And then we're going to get in with the endoscope. Here we go. And it, again, everything is prepared. This is not what it looks like. You can see the lamina of four, which I drilled already. I'll take the bipolar cautery, the Vapoflex. Um, again, here is rostral. Here's lateral, here's the bony edge up here. Here's the traversing nerve root. Rostral, caudal. And here is the annulus of the disc. And uh, again, I'm not gonna belabor that, but if there would be a lateral recess, stenosis or something like that, do you have a blunt dissector so we can just see? So again, now we're looking at the traversing nerve root. Here's caudal, here's rostral. The nerve root can be mobilized, can also be retracted with the tubular retractor. So uh, it makes uh, discectomies much less stressful because the traversing nerve root is entirely protected. Um, here's a little bit of yellow ligament. Again, I did not do a full decompression. It was a, just a lateral recess decompression and exposure, which typically we try to decompress from the top of the annulus to the caudal portion of the analyst, because that's where typically the stenosis is. All right, and so now we flip around here right now and we'll attempt uh, this visualization of a transforaminal approach. And in particular, it's always, um, again, it's a little bit improvised here right now because we don't have any equipment, but I think it's going to be nice because we are, here is the Cambian triangle, looking at it from the inside out, right? The tr exiting nerve root four is going to be up here. We don't see it yet, but we're going to see it from the transformal route. Here's the tip of the SAP. Here's the joint. Here's the SAP here. Again, now it's caudal, rostral. I changed the, the viewing of the endoscope a little bit. And so now we can leave this here, this tube, 
and we can start our transforaminal approach and see how it relates to the traversing nerve root. Okay. All right, so let's come back with the, uh, any questions so far? Or is everything crystal clear? Uh, Chris, I have a question. So when you're first docking that tube, are you docking on the lamina or are you, dock, are you sort of on the surface of the yellow ligament? That's a great, great question. So for, um, for decompression surgeries, the target area, so we, we defined it as a, as a target area. Target area can be any bony, subst bony sort of structure that you can visualize with x-ray, palpate with the choker or with the chamchi needle, and then visualize. So for this procedure with this very large interlaminar window, you can land on the yellow ligament. Uh, if you want to do some bony work, it's almost easier to land on, land on the inferior medial aspect of the rostral lamina. And so that's why with the AO spine, we have defined that as a target area for this procedure. So because it's easy to palpate um, and you rely on typically one, just one uh, anatomical landmark. So let's come in with the CM. Great question, thank you. All right, so now we get an uh, end plate view because uh, for the uh, for the transforaminal endoscopic fusion, we want to go right into the disc space. So we come, we straighten out the CM. We'll get an end plate view. And you have to raise the bed afterwards, afterwards. You have to raise the bed afterwards. And then we'll get a shot there. Okay. Uh, the end plate view is not perfect yet. I think you need to do a little bit of rostral tilt. That's uh, a little bit better, a little bit less. That's fine. Again, it's a gigantic disc space. It doesn't need a fusion. All right, X-ray there. So now we're in the middle of the disc space. We marking pen. We're marking this line here right now, the disc space. Then we get a lateral X-ray. Can we raise the bed, please? And basically, the the traditional. Um, targeting with these uh, endoscopic T-lifts is a 45 degree angle of the, of the, um, of the implant. Uh, however, I typically do less uh, because I like to have the implant sitting on the anterior aspect of the apophyseal plate. Um, and so we can actually take this dial it out, it's just in a way. So uh, I typically sort of want to be somewhere in the middle of the I mark the middle of the disc space there with this choker x-ray. So that's the middle of the vertebral body. So if I would take you know, this length from the back and go off the midline, I would be exactly 45 degrees. I want to be a little bit less, and so we divide that in three portions. And I typically go in between the middle and the lateral third. So again, this was the entire distance. And then you divide it into three, three portions. Actually, here's the middle. So you divide it into three portions total. And then you go in between the middle third and the lateral third. So that gives you like a, a roughly 35 degree angulation. So very similar to what I would do with a T-lift. Um, and then you advance uh, the Chamchi needle and you want to get on, it onto the SAP. So we go there. And again, that's tactile feedback. Again, you can also do the uh, navigated or with the robotic system x-ray. All right, so right there. Let's see where we are here. I don't think I'm all the way down yet. Shot there. Let's get a quick AP. And so the, the the plan now is to go through the superior to go process. Uh, and uh, Saki, uh, Sak is actually in the audience here right now. Well, not audience, he's faculty here. Uh, and so he actually um, wrote this uh, really, uh, you know, a landmark paper on this superior, uh, trans article, uh, the S trans SAP paper in where we don't go into the disc, as it do the frame and blindly anymore. And, um, but we go through the SAP. So you see that the uh, Chamchi needle is on the SAP, so we're in good position. Let's go back to lateral. We'll advance it in there. 
And that's a trans SAP technique and, and SOC. Uh, Dr. Hassan, in the, uh, part of the faculty of this course, uh, he uh, spearheaded that novel technique, which is really the, the latest evolution of transformal technology. All right, so we're right there. And then what we do is, again, instead of uh, going blindly through the foramen, we actually go into the bone. The bone is home, it's safe. X-ray. All right. Shot there. All right, and so we bring it in there. Shot. All right, advance a little bit into the disc. Let's go a quick AP. And now we're going to take a look and sort of see what this looks like. Uh, if it's safe, where we are in relation to the traversing nerve root. So we'll just get a little endoscope back. So first we get a quick shot there, AP. All right, and so obviously everybody's scared when you, when you see that. So let's come out with the CM. Uh, and we'll take a look. All right, so uh, endoscope is coming back in and we'll see how the traversing nerve root is doing here. All right, so here's our traversing nerve root, still one piece. And then, again, the nice thing about the endoscope is it's, it actually allows you to look around the corner of Apoflex, please. And you can see how much space we have between the traversing nerve root and the cham shield, which is going to be out there somewhere here. So I can let me clean that up. Okay. So before there. So here's our GMC needle here out there. Vapor flex. So very nice demonstration how far the GMC needle is away from the uh, traversing nerve root here. So here is our chem needle out there. And I can move it here. Here's the needle going in. Everybody sees the needle? Yep. So here's the chem needle going in there. Here's the traversing nerve root. So we would have space for another, you know, 10 millimeters at least to do that. So let's keep going here. So now uh, we know that we are far away from the Traversing nerve root. Now, the disc space, I have to admit, is also very, very tall. So, again, it's probably not a patient who would need necessarily a fusion surgery. But hey, have, as, as Jens showed us, that's what we do here in Seattle. So, um, here we go. So, we have those dilators that go in there. Okay, let's come back here. All right. Yeah, we can, we can switch over. All right, and so now we do the approach, and the approach is done with serial, uh, serial bone cutters and reamers. I do have a knife by chance. And uh, do you have, uh, can you give me one example of uh, a dilator plus a reamer in the appropriate size? And then where do I show it into the camera? Is there the camera, the close up is maybe down here or? Here, perfect. So the thing about these reamers is that you have a dilator here, and then you have a crown reamer. And what this does is, even if you would be close to a nerve root, it wouldn't necessarily um, gobble it up or, or, or hurt it too much. Uh, since the overlap, it's very, very minimal. So this is really done for sequentially drilling down uh, the bone. And here we use it to sequentially drill down the SAP again. And that's we, uh, according to Hassan and all, the um, trans SAP technique. Uh, really, anybody who's done endoscopy, it's, it's worthwhile to read that paper. Um, first, Rima is here. Okay. All right, so we'll advance the Rima. 
counterclockwise through the soft tissues, and then clockwise on the foramen, on the SAP X-ray there. Okay. The first sleeve is just in the in the disc there. That's okay. Anchored there. We reamed the first one. We'll do the second one. Do the next. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Chris, I had another question. So I know that traversing nerve root is protected, but what about the exiting nerve root? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the exiting nerve root is, um, again, is, is in, in, in cases of severe uh, foraminal stenosis, you're close to that. But again, we don't see that anymore with the trans-SAP technique. Don't forget that right now we're not going into the foramen, we're going into the superior articular process. As you can see here on the x-ray, we're taking the space of the bone and not of the foramen. So even if it's severely, severely uh, stenotic with the trans-SAP technique, you don't blindly enter the foramen. And so I still use monitoring, but quite frankly, if I would not be at a university teaching institution, I would probably not use it anymore because we just end up in the bone. So here, and the reaming is always, the trick with reaming is you pivot on your index finger because the SAP always pushes you to the side. And then you kind of almost like in a scraping type thing, medialize it and take down a little bit of that SAP. And the Chamshi needle was anchored in within that. So it makes it a very reproducible, safe technique. And I'm sure everybody's thinking it right now, obviously. Uh, and I think um, Sak is talking about this. This technique is obviously lends itself, is screaming for robotic application, right? I mean, this is very repetitive. Sure. And, and very, you know, it's always the same. Okay. Let's get a shot there. Okay, so we've got a tube there. And now we can take a look. Shot there, right in the foramen. And now we can take a look in the transforaminal approach. Um, and we'll see that same view that we had before in a second with a transforaminal approach. Again, the first view, Vaporflex, please. First view is here. So here's the reamed bone up there. I'm on bone there, SAP. Yellow ligament there. Two pituitary. And this is a bipolar, so this bipolar helps to stop bleeding as well as clean out the surgical field. Vaporflex, please. Game, please. Okay. Again, on the left side is caudal. On the right side is rostral. This is a very large foramen, so it's going to be hard to find the exiting nerve root up there. Uh, but I'm sure we can. Vaporflex. And then I'll just use the drill for one second to kind of look at this. So I'm just cleaning out that area here. Uh, again, this is the same area we looked in before. So here now we're looking in transforaminal. I'll just do one little second of drilling here. Here's the annulus of the disc. This is where we're going to place our uh, K-wire, if we would have the equipment to do a fusion. But again, we are just going here right now to explore that anatomy and the difference between the transforaminal and the interlaminar approach. Okay, so I'll use a drill, drill this down a smidge here so I can get into the lateral recess. Go. Oopsies. I think I pushed this bit away. Oh, yeah, yes. So I'll drill so I can drill down the SAP some more. 
Here's the SAP for the frame anatomy. And, and, the, and the transfer aminal approach is just a wonderful approach um, because it allows you to treat a lot of pathologies. And believe it or not, there's some surgeons who don't do anything else but this approach and treat a lot of different things. And now here we see the uh, yellow ligament beautifully. Vapoflex first and then keratin next. So here's the SAP. There's typically a little area that has no yellow ligament right at the bottom here. Here's the attachment of the yellow ligament here. Going north here in the foramen. I'll take a little keratin and take the yellow ligament down. There you go, it can go in there. And you can see this surgery is totally visualized. You can engage the kerosene, take a bite, and make sure you don't grab anything you don't want to grab. A very famous surgeon from Germany once told me that you cannot have any complications with this technique, but I don't 100% believe that. But you, theoretically, you see everything you do. So you can visualize every move. All right, so taking out a little bit of yellow ligament. And since we're here, I'll just take a peek north and sort of see where the exiting nerve root is. Again, the exiting nerve root is also ventral to the yellow ligament. The yellow ligament often extends all the way to the tip of the transverse processes. Again, this is something that is very helpful to know this anatomy well when you do a lot of transferamyl interbody fusions. And so up there, the yellow is, is the exiting nerve root here. On Kerrison, thank you. All right, so now we can explore the whole field. Here's yellow ligament and right ventral to the yellow ligament. Here is go is the exiting nerve root. You see that up there? That's the exiting nerve root. All right, so exploring the entire field, looking in here. Back there, we see the traversing nerve root. Do you have the blunt dissector? Was it not the blunt, the working cannula for the... So here is this. So here is where we, I'm in the interlamina approach trajectory. Again, first time ever to have this demonstrated at the same time. So if you see the same nerve root here that we saw there, and we can see it nicely through a transferminal opening here. You can see that there's quite a bit of space out there, and then we see the exiting nerve root, the L4 nerve root right here under that fat. So here's the nerve root up there, covered by fat. And then uh, do you have a K wire? And then let's say we would have the equipment, let's say there would not be a storm. Um, then I would place this K wire under full visualization making sure it's far away from the exiting nerve root, far away from the traversing nerve root, maybe go a little bit more narrow here, medial here, maybe like there. Maybe not, let's wait, this doesn't go in. There we go, I'll just push it into the disc here. And then this would guide the next dilators. So what you could do is, um, you can then, uh, once everything is visualized. So see where the is? Yeah, sure, x-ray. So k wire goes right on the disc. And then I'll just put a couple of dilators in there so we can see what the trajectory would be. And then we can take one more final look with the interlaminoscope and see what this would look like. Okay, one more shot there. So I'm basically pushing in the, the tubes here right now to see, shot there. Uh, can we get a lateral? What trajectory we have? Again, we don't have the disc prep and the cages because they're lost out there in the elements. Um, but I think you get a good impression and view what this would look like otherwise. And again, the discectomy parts, so we have reasonably, by, reasonably forward in the disc space here. And then we can advance it here. Get to the disk space. 
Again, we have different tools for doing this normally, but I'll just put the dilators into the disk space here. Shot there. Okay. X-ray. And I'll put all the dilators down there so that we can have one more view, one more last view of that thing. So actually, do the Rima. I just need the Rima one more time. Yeah, this yellow. So I'm going to place the cannula, which is approximately the cannula that we have for placement of the graft. And then we'll take one more last look from the interlamina approach. Actually, just the green one. Green one. Mm -hmm. And sort of see how much room we need to deliver that graft. Christoph, can you comment on when you use the intralaminar versus the transferaminal approach? Fantastic question. So intralaminar is basically what we, the same technique that we use for MIS and open, right? So it's, it's the same approach, right midline or a little off midline. Uh, you know, so I, I use that for 90% of L5S1 pathology where you have discs and uh, other pathology in there. Um, then for, um, so L5S1 is mainly interlaminal, maybe 10% transferaminal. 4.5 is probably 50-50. Uh, transferaminal, I use 4.5 for, um, for aminal stenosis, obviously. I use it for... Um, uh, what else do you use it? Uh, as transferamily, the lateral recess stenosis can be treated by either or. You can treat it by, with either using um, um, interlamina or transferaminal technique. Uh, both of them have pros and cons. So if with lateral recess stenosis, the interlamina technique gives you a better rostrocaudal extent of your decompression. And the, um, uh, the, Transferaminal gives you a better quality of decompression. With other words, you can decompress ventral and dorsal pathology easier uh, with the transferaminal, and you can go more medial. So I have a couple of young athletes that I had to remove the entirety of the 4-5 disc um, with them returning to play. Young people heal the analysts very, very well. Uh, and they just had a very, very uh, large bulging disc. And again, in young people who don't smoke, they often are able to regenerate and heal that disc. Um, shot there. All right, so we're in the disc space. So this would be the placement of a graft along this trajectory. Let's get a final AP. And when you're, when you're placing the graft before that, what kind of end plate prep can you do through the um, endoscopic approach? Yes. Uh, so the end plate wrap, we have, we have a, an expandable uh, pedal shaver. So it goes in there, it collapsed, and it expands. Uh, then we have uh, side angled loop corrects uh, in different sizes. So you get very good tactile feedback. Then you have side angled corrects. Um, you have a, um, and then you have a, a 180 degree cutter that sort of chops out a piece of disc going all the way backwards. Uh, we did a lot of cadaver studies on that, and the quality of discectomy is, the size of the discectomy is very comparable with, with an MIS discectomy. So it's, the tools are getting better um, all the time. So now for, for my practice at 4551, uh, often I still you know, use MIS technique because I can get a slightly bigger cage in there. Um, so here you can see the, um, the trajectory of the cage I like to place my cage right a little bit across midline, uh, like it is shown there. So for me, for me, this would be a very good placement. Oh, yeah, shot there. Perfect. So yeah, I knew where it would be. You no trust. Okay, so perfect. <laughs> so it's right at the very. I like to have it. I like to have my graft right across midline on the epiphyseal ring. So let's come out here and let's just take a look, last peek here on um, where this. Can you come out a little bit? How, how, where this tube is going to be seated in, in relation to the traversing nerve root, the exiting nerve root. We saw already, and I'll just, I'll just take a peek there. And we'll see what we see here, fully visualized coming in here. So again, here with the, the, tra the traversing nerve root, and here we're looking on the right side of the screen is our where this is very fluffy. 
cadaver is gonna fall apart. Uh, here we go. So this is lateral. This is caudal down here. This is rostral, medial, traversing nerve root here. And let me clean the endoscope. There's a little bit of fat on top there. Let's see a little better. Okay, so now we see much better. Again, the optics are just amazing how much they've improved the last couple of years. So you see the SAP is still here. And then my tube is right here. That's the tube delivering the graft. Here's the tube going in there. Great visualization. So we have a tremendous amount of space still for the traversing nerve root for that. So I would guess that's another eight millimeters or so. Actually, we can. <laughs> why, why do we have to guess, right? Normally, there's like other little things on there. Here, here are the millimeters. Huh. So this is. So graduation is one millimeter. What's that? Uh, graduation is a half millimeter. Oh, half millimeter. So, so okay. So, so it's roughly five millimeter, probably more, five to six millimeters away from the traversing nerve root. So we're we'll in very good shape there. Christoph, this is great. Thanks for um, making a virtual fusion happen. And um, <laughs> curious if there's any um, comments from anyone in the audience before we break for lunch. All right. Thanks again, Christoph. Great job. Thanks for having me.